All right, so fifth on the list is going to be Nurse. And I can already see now you guys are thinking, wow, why is Nurse in fifth when she has the potential to be the most annoying character to go against? And that's true. When you have mastered Nurse to such a degree, you can destroy any loop, you can destroy any tile, you can hit the survivor regardless of where they are because Nurse has the ability to teleport. I can agree with that. Here's the thing though, chances are most of you guys haven't even played against a really good nurse before. I have over a thousand hours in the game and I can only think of maybe two nurses that were so good that they were truly uncounterable and unplayable. And that's not to say that nurse is bad. I still think nurse is the best character in the game, but it's just you're never going to see a nurse that good. If this was a tier list based on skill or, you know, which character is better, I definitely would say Nurse would be at the top of it. But this top five is just what is the most annoying character to go against and 99% of the time you go against a nurse and they're just not that good and like breaking line of sight is all you really need to do to beat them. That being said, when the nurse is good, you just kind of put your head down and let it happen. Number four is going to be Hag. And Hag is absurdly frustrating to play against. When a Hag has an area the map set up, you pretty much just can't go in that area anymore. And God forbid she actually manages to down someone because that's a nightmare. Hag's ability to just camp someone from really far away is literally unparalleled. Not even other characters like that can teleport can really keep up with her. When she actually sets up traps around a hook, you as a player or just screwed if you're the person on the hook because if someone crouches over and unhooks you and doesn't destroy the traps then you guys can't get away without blowing up the traps if someone runs up to you then they blow up the traps and the hag teleports back and instantly hits the person if someone uses a flashlight to destroy the traps then she sees the traps being destroyed and runs back before he manages to save you it, it doesn't matter when a hag is camping someone unless there are multiple people coordinating or just playing really well you as a player just don't escape. The reason that Hag isn't up higher on this list though and is only number 4 is because there is a counter that you can do. What you do is at the beginning of the game you have one player just run around and harass the Hag and whenever they place a trap they run over and they flashlight it or they, they run out through it just to make sure she never gets set up. And if you have one person who's comfortable with looping who just is messing with the hack and making sure she can never have more than like two traps out at a time, then pretty much the hag can't snowball. But you're pretty much depending on either strangers to do it or depending on your team if you're using comms to, to not die. And even then that's really risky. So overall hag is a frustrating killer to play against, but also to play as. Most players don't really want to have to play a really campy play style. They don't find that fun or entertaining so they refuse to play hag. You can see this with most streamers. They literally will not play hag regardless of how much money you pay them, and that has to say something. Next up is going to be Pyramid Head. He has a power where he puts his sword into the ground, and he can flick his sword up and shoot a straight line that damages targets. The issue is it'll go under pallets, under windows, under walls, it'll go through anything. What this means is he can put you in 50-50 situations or even 100-0 situations where no matter what you do, you're going to take a hit. Let's say you're being chased to a pallet, and the pyramid head isn't close enough to hit you with a basic attack. What he can do is, as you're running to a pallet, he can put his sword into the ground. And if you throw that pallet down, he pulls the sword up and hits you with his ranged attack. If you don't throw the pallet down, he takes the sword out of the ground and then hits you. It basically makes it to where you can't really loop pallets against the dude, it just it doesn't work. There's specific angles where it might be harder to hit a attack with Pyramid Head, but you're basically depending on them to miss, not on you to outplay them, which is just infuriating. And here's a thing that I kind of want to explain. People, people will always say, they will always say, you know, they'll watch someone play versus Pyramid Head and they'll be like, you're just running in a straight line, you're, you're ignoring all these loops. But the thing is, you, you just, you have to, because if you actually try to loop those things, you get hit. So basically what you gotta do is you gotta just keep breaking line of sight and just running in a straight line. And the only really counter to beating Pyramid Head is to just stall. 
because if you run in a straight line, that's very hard for Pyramid Head to kill you. Or more, it just takes a lot of time, I guess is the proper way to say it. And that's not fun. If the only counter is just stalling by running in a straight line, then what's the point? You're not even playing a game at that point. But not only that, he has other things that make him irritating too. As a Pyramid Head player, if someone runs through your Trail of Torment, then you can send them to a cage, or if they're on their third hook, you can just execute them right away. This is extremely powerful because this gets around perks that would be able to protect a survivor. If you have Decisive Strike, but you're in Torment and someone downs you, they don't have to pick you up, they can just put you in the cage, and then your Decisive Strike doesn't matter. Or, if you get pulled out of a cage, you don't have Decisive Strike, you don't have Borrowed Time, the person that pulls you off doesn't have Will Make It. Basically, this makes Pyramid Head absurdly good at tunneling and it's actually so good that what players will do is they will literally just let the pyramid head kill them instead of walking in the trail of torment that way they actually manage to get their decisive strike or their borrow time and it'll stop pyramid heads from tunneling them as easily i can't believe there's a meta where you literally just have to let the killer kill you to be able to play the game without being tunneled that's absurd and that's why he's definitely earned the spot as number three. Now for number two, this was a tough choice between Pyramid Head and the one I chose, but I'm definitely thinking that Deathslinger earns number two spot. He has no map mobility, he moves at 110 speed, he has to reload after every single shot, and even when he like hits people with his shot, he has to reel them in and then hit them, which just wastes so much time. He just isn't a meta character because of that. Here's the thing though, even if he's not a top tier character, his ability to destroy 1v1s is so stupidly absurd that he's earned that spot on that alone. Basically, he has a gun, and he can instantly aim down the sights and shoot at any point, and the gun moves fast enough that where you can't even react to it, which basically means Deathslinger is literally just playing his own game. You as a player can do nothing but just hope that the Deathslinger miss, or press dead hard when you think he's gonna fire. That's literally the only things you can really do. And that's terrible. It makes it to where Deathslinger doesn't really care what map it is, doesn't really care where you are on the map, doesn't really matter to him because no matter what is going on, he will pop around the corner, he will see you for a quarter of a second, and if he's good at aiming, he will shoot you. People say that you can make him miss, but not really. When I used to play soccer back in the day, I remember repeatedly being taught that you always look at the opponent's waist when they're trying to pass you with a ball. Because no matter what they're doing with the top of their body, no matter what they're doing with their feet trying to mix you up, if you're staring at their waist, you'll notice that whatever direction their waist is facing, that's the way they're going to run. And you can't really trick people like that. And that's why I was so good on defense, because people could never trick around me. I always knew which direction they were going and I could get in the way and block them. And that's kind of what you do with Deathslinger, you watch their hips. It doesn't matter if they're juking left and right a lot, their hips are always a consistent, accurate vision of where their hitbox is. So you always aim for the hips as Deathslinger, you shoot for the hips, and you hit them pretty much every time. So it doesn't matter if they're juking back and forth, you can always do that. A lot of characters have specific situations where you can force 50-50s. For example, if you're at a pallet, a huntress can force a 50-50 sometimes, depending on her distance from the pallet, to where she'll pull up her hatchet, and if you threw down the pallet, then you get hit. And then if she doesn't pull up her hatchet, then sometimes she's able to M1 you if she's close enough. Here's the thing though, Deathslinger can put you in a 50-50 from pretty much any distance within 17 meters, which is how far his gun shoots. And he does that by just aiming down his sights really quickly. And if you dodge, he gains distance on you. But if you don't dodge and he shoots, then he hits you. And he can literally just keep doing that over and over. And you have to just keep trying to guess, is he going to shoot at me? Is he going to not shoot at me? What's he going to do? And he can do this at any point. He can constantly put you in a 50-50 every two seconds. Deathslinger just has way too much control over a 1v1 chase because of the fact he just has a gun that can fire instantly. And honestly, I don't know what the devs were doing putting him in the game. And finally, number one on the tier list, everyone saw it coming, it's Spirit. People have said for the longest time that even after the nerf, they're like, yeah, Spirit, you know, she's not too good. You can, you can play around her, no, you can't. I recently went against the Spirit with the most haunted downs using her power in the United States. 
And this person was insane. They didn't use Strider. They didn't use like any tracking perks. They were just that good. I was fully health. I was crouch walking and there was no grass nearby and she was able to pinpoint my exact location and hit me. That's how good this person was. So even if you're doing everything optimally, even if you have iron will, even if you're doing all the quote unquote safe things, it, it really doesn't matter if the spirit changes some settings outside of the game or has a specific type of headphones, she'll always be able to hear where you are. And that's not fair. One of the things though that makes her so infuriating to play against as well is the fact that you have no feedback as a player as to what she's doing. It's unrealistic to think that you can stare at her crystals that light up when she's using her power because they're sometimes really small and hard to see and other times the lighting effect can make them look like they're glowing depending on where you're standing. You have no feedback as to when she's facing if you're in her terror radius, you just, you're just standing there. You're just standing there then all of a sudden spirits on top of you and hits you. It's so unfun to play against. And unlike other characters like Pyramid Head or Death Slinger who are countered because they have no map pressure, Spirit has map pressure. She has great, fantastic mobility. She has a power that can consistently be used for mobility. It can be used every five seconds if you cancel it quickly enough. If you make it to a loop, what Spirit can do is she can just use her power for like two seconds and then she can try to guess. And if she guesses wrong, then guess what? She can use her power five seconds later for two seconds and she can just keep doing that and keep putting you in a guessing game and eventually you're gonna miss one. And even if you guess right four times in a row, like the fifth time she gets you and in total time it took her 15 seconds to hit you, that's nothing. That's literally nothing. And then if a spirit player actually decides, you know what, I'm gonna run Strider, you pretty much just lose. They don't even need Strider to be able to hear you at all times, but Strider just makes it easy. I just, this character is so absurdly stupid and she's way too easy for what she's capable of doing. I just, I cannot in good faith say that any killer is more frustrating to play against than her. And it's to the point where I literally just let spirits win so I don't lose my mental if I think they're any amount of good whatsoever. At the end of the day, it's just a stupid party game. I wouldn't take these things too seriously. Just know that there are some characters that are gonna piss you off and chances are they're one of these top five. But if you think I'm wrong and Wraith is actually the most OP busted character in the game, completely unfair, then just let me know. I'd honestly like to talk to you guys about this because I think that this is probably the most accurate description of what people generally consider unfun and annoying to go against.